Uh, John, there's some exciting news this week from Tom and Odsell and uh, Trey O'Sullivan has signed a contract with the club. Yeah, Trey signed for this year. Uh, obviously, initially as a reserve player, but obviously with the potential showed in the trial game against Halifax, which is a, an elite championship team, I think there might be something more there. So uh, it'll be a great journey for us to uh, to get on with Trey and uh, obviously be a great journey for him as well because He's responded really well to the, the environment we've got here. He's trained well and I think everybody will, will agree that uh, you know, 25 minutes or so that he had against Halifax, he, he performed well as well. Is it fair to say, John, that that comes as a bit of a surprise? Yes, it is. It is, yeah. A pleasant surprise. Uh, but he, he was really bought into what we're trying to do and I think he's elevated uh, his, his, his levels of intensity and focus to what we, we expect here and that's the reward, so it's good. And obviously um, it must be over the moon when you consider the adversity at Halifax, he's come and trained with the Bradford Bulls and now he's, he's signed a contract. Yeah, I, th I think he'll, he'll be delighted with it and uh, he, you know, he's, 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 he's an outstanding kid to tell the truth and he's a very strong kid and he's a very big kid so if you're strong and you're big and you've got a good attitude, uh, you're halfway there, aren't you? So it's a matter of us, us now knocking the rough edges off and just honing those that skill level and his decision making, and uh, you know with half a chance with him. And it's also a welcome boost considering the current injuries to Steve Crossley and, and Ross Peltier. Yeah, but I mean Steve's going to be Steve's itching. Uh, I mean we trained uh, last Tuesday on on the uh, 4G at Bradford Academy, and I had to I had to sort of have a word with Steve to pull back because. Uh, he was ready to get stuck in and get amongst it and really we need to manage him so that he comes back at the appropriate time because Steve's very important to us and when he gets back we want him back for the full season so uh, we're, at, we're at the minute we've got him on tight reins uh, but I'm looking forward to when we release those reins and we can see him back on the field of play. Is he an estimated uh, date of recovery for Steve Crossler? Steve, Steve's telling us that he's going to play against Toronto uh, and I see no reason to, to disbelieve that. Uh, the medical team are you know, a little more cautious, I would say. So, but I'm expecting 20 minutes or so against Toronto and then obviously that puts his hand up then to, to lead his team out uh, in the first game of the season against Featherston. Two games this weekend, John. A bit of a conundrum for you. Uh, is there any team news you, you can tell us which... Uh, you know, which is good, probably going to be the strongest side, either the Dewsbury game or the Huddersfield game? I think they're both strong. Uh, I mean, I, I'm really excited about it, to tell you the truth, uh, because we've got some young lads from the 19s who'll be getting a, a chance on both Saturday and the Sunday. Uh, some established players we're playing, you know, on Sunday, some established players we're playing on Saturday. So I, I feel we've got two competitive squads out and uh, two squads all, all play well. And should they play well, you know, we'll end up being proud of, of what, the, what they achieve on the Saturday and on the Sunday. So it's exciting. The, the negative is that Jai Hitchcock, uh, he, he, he won't be uh, featuring uh, because he's, he's picked up a, a sort of neck injury, or upper back uh, neck injury. Uh, so we're, we're heading on the side of safety with him. And obviously Ross is out, but Matty Garside does return. So he'll feature on the Sunday. So uh, yeah, it's, it's we're looking okay, but it'll be good to see everybody who's fit actually get a run out, and it'll be great to see some of these young kids as well, because we might get a surprise or two like we've already had with Alex Stevenson and how well Josh Ricketts has performed already. It goes without saying, John. Obviously, two games, two opportunities to impress you. It is a big squad, and that competition for places. Is going to ensure that everyone is at hundred percent playing at the very best. Exactly. Well, just look at the halfbacks. You know, on one day we're turning out Rowan Mills and Joe Keys. On the other day we're turning out Jordan Lilly and Dane Chisholm. Well, I would suggest they're both good pairs of halfbacks, and you can replicate that at hooker. You can replicate that at uh, centre. You can replicate that at fullback. So it's it's a real good position that we're in but we'll get even stronger and we'll get better when we understand each other more and when the players have built the combination solidly. But it's just exciting. Uh, it really is, Mick. It's very, very exciting. And, yeah, I've enjoyed up to now the pre-season, but as we're getting near February the 3rd, it's, you know, the, the butterflies are just starting and the excitement levels are just building. So it, it, I am just can't wait for the season to get underway. It's a Yorkshire Cup semi-final at Odsall on Saturday against Dewsbury. It's going to be another... Uh, high quality 
intense game against fellow championship opponents. Exactly right. I mean, we, we all went as a coaching staff and we watched both York and Hunslet Parkside, but we, we also had a look at Dewsbury and Featherston because obviously you try to gain as much as you can information about your opposition and, uh, you know, Dewsbury were good. They were tough, uh, they were well organised, they were well disciplined and they took some breaking down and they caused a problem or two with the ball in hand, so they were good. So we're fully aware of what they'll, they'll bring to us. They'll bring championship standard rugby league and we've got to answer that as well and hopefully overcome that. In terms of the pre-season preparations, John, uh, whereabouts are we currently? We're miles in front where we were last year. Uh, absolutely miles in front. I would say... We're just about going through the documents and just crossing T's and dossing I's. So we're just doing all the little details now so that the big picture stuff is, is, in, is in hand, but we're just doing all the little details. And we are finding as coaches, we're trying to find out who goes best with who, who dovetails best with who in centres, at half back, uh, which props, which middle unit players play better together. So again, it's, it's a journey we're having and we're having lots of discussions, but that's what's great about this you know, time of season. You, you throw different combinations up and you say, well, he's got plus points and perhaps he's not as good at that. And it's just great to be talking rugby league all the time, as well as practising it, as well as getting them as fit as we possibly can. So good time of year, but it's getting, I'm getting itchy feet really for February the 3rd. I know some, John, people might think it's beginning to sound like a broken record, this Bradford Bulls youth conveyor belt, but uh, Tuesday gone, uh, I went down and spoke to Sam Hallis, who of course is now coaching with the yep, scholarship, yep. John Bastian, Lee Beatty, Matt Dunning, and you see the under-19s, you see those scholarship players, and you look at the quality coming through at this club, and it is no understatement, it is frightening and scary, but at the same time, all quite heartening. It's, well, yeah, I think it's frightening and scary for other clubs. Uh, I think it's very, very heartening for the, the, the fans and, and the officials and the coaches of Bradford Bulls. Uh, i tell you the truth, it's, it's testimony to, first of all, John Bastian's talent identification is second to none. And secondly, the development programmes I've got here in the scholarship and in the 19s under the jurisdiction of Mark Dunning and Lee Beatty, second to none. So we're at ease. We, we put lots of work into it, but you reap the rewards of that work. And I agree with you totally, Mick, that... You know, there's some kids who are going to be first year academy this year, uh, and I aren't going to name them because I don't want to put any uh, any pressure on them. But with a three quarter and a half back, oh, I'll tell you, we really do need to get excited about because they can play. So yeah, it's exciting, and if it's scary for other clubs, good. Just finally, John, it is the Yorkshire Cup. Uh, are you happy with the competition coming back? Because we had fifteen hundred at Dewsbury on the Saturday, we had nearly three and a half thousand at Odsall on the Sunday. It seems to me that it's a, a worthwhile competition that's giving some, not just back to the players, but also the fans. I think we saw that in the, the hunslet Batley game, that intensity was there. Oh, they yeah. didn't want to lose that game, even mm. though it was pre-season. Not at all. I mean, I, I, I've actually been speaking with Paul Harris and the, uh, the Batley chief exec uh, just just an hour or so ago, Mick, and uh, he was saying exactly the same thing. He says it... It brings a purpose and a meaning to the trial games, but especially for the fans. Fans like to see results, don't they? I mean, it's all those coaches going on, oh, we're bothered about performance, we're looking at different combinations, this, that and the other. They want to see, you know, the team in red, amber and black perform well and win. And that it brings that element of, of cutthroatness to it. So, yeah, I think it has been good and hopefully it builds on these solid foundations in coming years. Cheers, John. All the best. Okay, mate.